introduction on infrastructure economics and also the discussion on the features of infrastructure. Now we are going to discuss the third topic and that is the importance and application of infrastructure. So uh, the brief outline uh, of this uh, lecture will be the importance of infrastructure. We will discuss in detail that how infrastructure is an important uh, step in economic uh, planning, growth and development, application of infrastructure economics in different field and at the, at the same time uh, we will conclude with how infrastructure and public policy uh, is, uh, is uh, important today. And uh, uh, to begin with uh, what is basically why infrastructure is so important. Uh, with a brief introduction on infrastructure we have already seen uh, uh, and we have uh, discussed uh, that how infrastructure is going to help in determining uh, the process of SPD economic growth. But the recent uh, uh, literature available with the World Bank shows that infrastructure helps in determining the success of manufacturing agriculture activities including the services. For example, investment in water, sanitation, energy, housing and transport improves lives and help in reduction of the poverty. Uh, this is uh, statistically proved that how uh, uh, availability of safe drinking water, sanitation, uh, uh, improvement in the energy condition, housing, transported, transportation facility uh, is uh, uh, improving the employment, improving the uh, living standard, improving and uh, 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 improving the conditions of the poor and at the same time how it bridges the gap which, which continued in past and uh, taking the, taking the uh, society economy as, as a whole uh, in, in a very new, in a completely new direction. So uh, new information and communication technologies uh, promote uh, growth, improve uh, delivery of health and other services, expand the reach of education and support social and cultural advances. So uh, 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 in, in brief we can say that infrastructure is not the end result of economic activity, uh, rather it is the framework that makes economic activity possible. So what are basically the benefits of the study of infrastructure economics? because this particular study helps us in linking the, uh, linking the economic growth with development. It gives us to uh, an idea to understand the role of infrastructure in production of goods and services. Uh, we also get the idea of how cost efficient services is being produced, not only services but also goods are being produced with the help of infrastructure. This study also helps in evaluating the benefits of growth through infra projects, exploring the promotional role of infrastructure in trade and commerce and how uh, the development of infrastructure attracts foreign capital such as FDI and FII and uh, a better infrastructure helps us in regional economic integration. So briefly I will discuss one by one. Uh, for example, when we say growth and development through infrastructure, infrastructure economics attempts to study the, uh, the supporting concern of infrastructure uh, which, which, basically, uh, which basically supports the uh, principles of microeconomics and macroeconomics, uh, the principles of development, principles of growth. Uh, because uh, if, if, uh, if we can just, uh, just uh, go back to the Rosestein Roden model which is one of the uh, old model of economic growth which uh, discuss about the big push uh, and that big push is nothing except the investment in large uh, minimum investments which is needed in industrial and infrastructure sector to overcome the obstacles to development and which attends the high growth path. Infrastructure helps in social overhead capital, 
Examples of social overhead capital includes the railways, roads, sanitation, uh, schools, hospitals, and public parks. Uh, underdevelopment, underdeveloped uh, uh, transportation uh, results in slow and uncertain delivery of goods and services. Uh, it hinders the economic growth and distribution. Like that, uh, 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 unavailability of electricity or safe drinking water or uh, roads, bridges uh, that basically hampers the future uh, prospect of growth and development. The economic growth story of the many successful country such as United States, Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan can be uh, well cited here to understand that how investment in social as well as physical infrastructure uh, helps to design a very uh, better living standard in the country, uh, having a uh, well-being uh, uh, at a very large level. And not only that, but also to contribute in the economic growth of manufacturing, a, a growth in agriculture, uh, and overall economic development process of these economies. After discussing this growth and uh, development, we should not forget that uh, how production in all the sectors are well equipped, uh, well, well, well supported with the help of infrastructure. Because it infrastructure supports the production of goods and services by pro providing basic structure and facilities. And once uh, infrastructure is ready, uh, uh, there, are, there are so many uh, positive aspects of the production. Once infrastructure is not ready, there are so many uh, backtrack in the production system. So the well-developed transport networks uh, reduces the cost of bringing the raw material and other critical inputs to the manufacturing units. The power of electricity is crucial for production units and arguments to the production of goods and services. Let me also cite here a, the recent advertisement which I have seen few days before. Uh, in a newspaper uh, by, the, uh, by the newly uh, uh, established state Telangana uh, and uh, uh, the, the advertisement by the state uh, is showing that uh, 24 into 7 electricity at the same time ready infrastructure. So these two things are uh, more than enough to to attract the investment because investors wants if, if uh, any invest uh, any producer want wants to start production they need uh, electricity 24 into 7 and at the same time they need uh, other ready infrastructure uh, to bring the raw material uh, even after the production they need the ready infrastructure to 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 send the uh, product product material or, or or the production to the to the consumer uh, so, without uh, such uh, support, without such uh, infrastructure support, it is very difficult uh, to continue with in the production because production today is not only uh, 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 having the final product, but the production today includes the, uh, the final consumption. The producer is no more a producer if the producer's product is not finally consumed. Uh, because we live in a, we, we are in a, in a very globally interdependent world and interconnected world where, uh, uh, where everything matters when uh, all the production matters. The final uh, victory of a producer is not only in terms of uh, what they have produced, but the final victory of a producer is how a producer is uh, smart enough to sell it in the international market. So the investment in social infrastructure such as education and healthcare uh, creates human capital that provides labor for the industry. And as well as uh, uh, you are also having a very vibrant consumer, uh, a very active consumer uh, through the uh, uh, more educated and more healthy uh, conditions of uh, the social infrastructure development. Telecommunication uh, is again one of the major uh, uh, major uh, contribution in the in the modern economic development, and that has uh, really improved the marketing, and it has provided a, a very 
uh, wide range of information to the consumer as well as to the producer. So, it was not the condition before uh, 20 years uh, uh, which we are having through the e-marketing and uh, e-banking and uh, so this is basically the uh, 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 economists do use this term as the information highway. We have developed the information highway uh, in, in past few years and a few countries are on the way of developing this information highway and that basically improves in uh, delivering the information to the consumer, receiving the information from the consumer, uh, throwing the products through the, uh, uh, the e-marketing. Uh, one of the survey which uh, I was uh, reading that uh, these days, uh, uh, there, are, uh, there are consumers attracted through the e-marketing, uh, uh, different uh, uh, web marketing is going on and uh, uh, the retail sector especially uh, the established shops are uh, not really having uh, increase in the in, in the consumption in the consumer uh, number of consumers because they receive a threat they receive a challenge from uh, the e-marketing uh, and e-business so this is a new turn in the market where where through the help of information technology uh, we are establishing a different type of uh, network with the consumer and that network is going to to reduce the cost of uh, delivery of the product to the consumer. And uh, uh, this type of uh, experience and this type of, uh, this type of, uh, this type of uh, marketing is the new way of marketing, new, uh, uh, new uh, steps in the uh, globalized marketing. So the co cost of efficient uh, production of goods and services is the is the prime goal of the uh, of the world today prime goal of the market forces today so in that case uh, infrastructure is one of the major contributor it is one of the major uh, major uh, uh, you can say facilitator to help the producers to reach to the market or to get the raw material on on a very low price or 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 to to have the more and more uh, inputs such as labor and uh, uh, which is which is known as the mobility of the factors if if uh, you have more mobility of the factors you will certainly have the uh, you will certainly have the availability of the factors of, of the production if you don't have mobility of the factors of production uh, producers are not really gaining anything out of it because they are losing uh, the sense of production so uh, after discussing this, the interlinkage between the production and infrastructure, let me also discuss a little bit about the foreign capital and infrastructure. Because today, uh, as we have discussed in, in our introductory lecture, lecture, that we are not uh, living in a very, uh, uh, in a command world or controlled world uh, or only a state-run uh, uh, system. But we are in a, a, in a free economy today. Uh, majority of the investors are joining here and there and they are looking for more opportunities and, and, uh, and more growth. So when uh, they are looking for the country, they are looking for the country which has more better infrastructure and better uh, equipped uh, uh, infrastructure uh, for, uh, for their, their benefit. And in that way, uh, we find here uh, that some of the statistics uh, 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 is very clear that uh, by 2000, uh, between 2010 and 20, uh, Asia uh, required around uh, uh, around 8 trillion US dollar especially for infrastructure uh, projects and we find a uh, infrastructure investment gap especially in Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa and Latin American countries because uh, countries having better infrastructure attracts more uh, foreign investments. There are uh, certain statistics like uh, 900 million people are still waiting for safe drinking water in, in Asia and Pacific region. Uh, similarly, uh, one or two billion people are uh, not having road uh, facilities. So these are the statistics uh, uh, which shows that we have to have foreign capital uh, uh, for the growth, for the development. And we, we need this foreign capital also to develop our infrastructure. So uh, we cannot really say that foreign capital will come uh, without, uh, uh, without having a proper infrastructure base. 
but but it is also important to to figure out that how this foreign capital will be attracted and uh, foreign capital cannot be attracted if we are not really having uh, proper support base uh, for the infrastructure uh, uh, the next point which uh, I would also like to highlight here uh, which is uh, equally important when we are discussing infrastructure economics that uh, uh, whatever trade in commerce uh, is, is uh, uh, growing today uh, because the uh, world is uh, increasingly, uh, increasingly having a fast growth in trade uh, the percentage which we are having in 1950 in terms of uh, uh, the percentage of trade in the global GDP that uh, percentage of trade in global GDP has improved uh, 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 many fold today. And we find that uh, majority of the countries are basically looking that outward uh, uh, development model, outward growth model where they are not only looking that what uh, they have produced for their domestic uh, uh, consumer, but they are looking for what they, are, they have to produce and what they have really contributed for the global consumer. So, trade is regarded as the engine of uh, uh, growth today and uh, uh, sound and adequate infrastructure is however needed for sustained growth of exports. Well developed and adequate infrastructure is essential for promotion and facilitation of production because it brings down the cost of production, uh, limits the transaction cost and makes uh, export competitively uh, competitive at the global level. Uh, according to 2013 Mercer's cost living index and Seville's uh, life work report, Singapore continued to be the co cost competitive compared with other major financial centers because of the well developed infrastructure facilities. So, uh, this example uh, tells us that how trade and commerce uh, uh, is, is one of the integral part of the, uh, uh, of the infrastructure. And uh, without having the infrastructure, it is impossible to really have uh, growth in export. And even even a country wants to import, it is hardly uh, hardly difficult. It is it is really difficult to have import also, uh, because for that also you need infrastructure facilities developed in your country. Uh, last but not least, I would also like to discuss that how infrastructure. Uh, and regional economic integration uh, working together. So, if, if uh, uh, neighboring countries are well connected with the infrastructure like India is trying hard for a proper uh, network with uh, uh, neighboring countries, uh, we have uh, connectivity with Nepal, we have connectivity with Pakistan, we have connectivity with Bangladesh, uh, we are having uh, thinking for the connectivity with, with other neighboring countries. And uh, uh, if that connectivity is there, lots of uh, mobility of the factors which we can see uh, which, which will be helpful for uh, each country uh, in South Asia and outside the South Asian region. So, regional integration can take the form of either free trade area or custom union that is a part of the international trade. And uh, uh, the institutional framework uh, is provided by the adequate and proper infrastructure if uh, uh, the government is really ready for such regional integration, government has to facilitate uh, infrastructure projects and uh, to help those, those, uh, those uh, neighboring states to have a proper uh, understanding for the regional integration. Uh, integrated markets with regional integration and uh, efficient infrastructure helps in attracting investments and it provides quality of goods and services at competitive prices. For instance, Japan will provide uh, 30 billion US dollar to India for infrastructure development in next five years. So, uh, that, is, that is one example, but we have other news coming from China or we are also uh, ready to help Bangladesh and we are also ready to have uh, ready to help uh, other smaller countries of South Asia. And uh, this shows that how, uh, uh, how the uh, connectivity uh, which is possible through the roads, which is possible through the, uh, through the open sky policy is important 
today uh, for the regional economic integration. Uh, let me again uh, discuss briefly about the application of infrastructure economics. Infrastructure economics is not only the, the area which is going to give certain benefits to the student of economics, but for understanding the urban finance today or to understand the business economics or to have the idea uh, uh, of the cost and production for the civil engineers or to have the uh, policy making for the local bodies or at the central level uh, or the uh, higher authorities uh, as a part of the public policy, uh, infrastructure economics is applicable for all these, uh, uh, all these people and all these organizations including the rural and urban managers uh, and the community development uh, uh, as, a, uh, as, as an example. Uh, we can say that infrastructure economics, the study of infrastructure economics is not having a very limited or narrow uh, applications, but it has a very wide range of application today. Uh, again, uh, when it comes for the public policy, public policy plays a very critical role in infrastructure development. Uh, public policies uh, proclaimed by the government such as regulatory measures, uh, funding priorities, uh, etc. are the part of the decisions taken by the government and uh, what type of public choice government is having uh, that is basically the economic analysis of the government decision making. So, how good the government is in terms of taking the decision uh, for the infrastructure development. Uh, how free the decisions are from the nepotism, corruption and how collective action the government may work under the influence of the special interest groups that serve the own interest sometime. We have seen in, in many uh, infrastructure projects in India, in, in many developing country and outside India uh, that uh, uh, there are certain rent seeking uh, approach when government approves a program that benefits only a small group of uh, people within the society, but whole society pays the cost for it. So, uh, it is high time for us to, to really uh, uh, interlink the infrastructure and public policy. There are certain states which is basically welfare states, uh, majority of the states are, uh, are, are uh, uh, basically uh, coming out from their welfare approach and but at the same time we cannot uh, uh, the, the government cannot run away from the uh, welfare responsibility of the of the society because ultimately uh, economics uh, deals with uh, the welfare of the society as a whole. So, one cannot really decline that uh, one cannot really decline from the responsibility of the welfare. But at the same time, it, it was found that uh, particularly in more prosperous and democratic societies, uh, which distributes resources extensively to provide for the health, education, employment, housing and income uh, that basically supports for its own citizen, especially many Eastern European economies today, uh, they really have uh, a better welfare uh, uh, system, better welfare income distribution compared to, to many Asian countries which are really having large population, but they are not good in terms of uh, distributing the uh, welfare uh, a, a in income uh, uh, because of various regions, uh, because of uh, uh, not having a proper uh, employment generation or not having proper uh, understanding uh, of economic growth. Uh, generally, majority of the workers are still depending on the agriculture for the livelihood. That is the feature of major feature of the developing and least developed countries. And if there is no, uh, no transition from no occupational change from agriculture to industry and industry to services, then uh, the people are uh, some of the people are either having discouraged unemployment or their marginal productivity in agriculture is basically uh, zero. Uh, so, in, in that situation, when we say uh, to improve the human being conditions, to improve the living standard, to improve the quality of the life, to have a major development, it is indeed important to have 
the infrastructure not only in the urban area but also uh, in the rural area. So the urban and rural uh, infrastructure uh, should go together in many developing country and the policy maker or the public policy uh, uh, bodies should not really avoid uh, to have the uh, infrastructure uh, development in the rural part because more we are developing the rural part more we are avoiding the uh, migration from rural to urban part and if we are avoiding if we are somehow restricting this migration uh, we really required less infrastructure in urban part so taking lessons from the different part of the world today it is indeed important to important for the policy makers public policy makers to think on how infrastructure can be uh, can be made uh, on the low cost and how it, it, it can be maintained for longer period of time and uh, how much we can really restrict the misuse of infrastructure and, and uh, the, the rent seeking approach uh, in the development of infrastructure. So with this, uh, uh, with this uh, 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 note, I would like to basically uh, conclude uh, this particular lecture. Uh, saying that uh, the importance of infrastructure, the, it is not the issue for us to ignore, but it is very important for us to again have the further linkage of infrastructure with growth development uh, and uh, with trade, commerce, regional integration. And uh, as long as we are not really uh, connecting infrastructure with these aspects, uh, the, the study of infrastructure, uh, infrastructure economics uh, will remain uh, concentrated uh, uh, at a very at a very uh, uh, restricted level. So it is it is indeed important to really uh, really look for the study of infrastructure uh, beyond the country and uh, to to uh, to have the final uh, view that how infrastructure is not only good for a country but the infrastructure development is good for the regional integration global integration. Thank you.